If you think you know every creature kept in Jurassic World's restricted section, think again. This area is speculated to be home to the most top secret engine, projects, things of nightmares. But there's one thing which towers above the rest, something so terrifying it actually gave me nightmares. But I'm not talking about things like the Carno or the Allosaurus, which we know were held in there. Hell, even Mrs. Kirby, because she's the things of nightmares. Would you tell your wife to stop making that noise? That is a very, very bad idea. I'm talking about something far darker, far more grotesque. And for anyone with a weak stomach today, this video may not be for you. So hold on to your butts, grab yourself a game of subs and strap in, because this is going to be one hell of a video. Now, immediately, I know what you're thinking. The restricted section is no stranger to my channel. I've done numerous videos on what could lie in there in the past. But this video is something completely different, something I'd never really thought about until very recently. You see, this entire area is completely off limits, even to the highest Jurassic World staff, with next to nothing known about its existence or even the secrets held within. I mean, we know the Scorpius Rex was kept in there, and even that was kept a secret from Simon Mizrani. It was ordered destroyed, but yet kept alive in stasis. And literally, the only people which knew of his existence was Dr. Wu himself, and maybe a few select others. That is, until it escaped. So if that was kept under wraps from the CEO of the entire company, what else were they keeping secret in there? We knew the Indominus Rex paddock was also in there, along with the Raptor paddock and the secret project Ibris, which is something I'd like to speak about later because it does play into today's theory. Now, many people are actually terrified of the Dilophosaurus, and hell, I don't blame them after the scene with Dennis Nedry in Jurassic Park 1, right? I mean, literally eating him alive. But that isn't the species we're going to be talking about today, although it does play a part. Because during a scene in Jurassic World, Jimmy Fallon, or whatever his name is, is going on about Dilophosaurus venom. Your safety is our main concern, which is why you're behind our invisible barrier system which protects you from things like Dilophosaurus venom. Then that got me thinking, why would they have to make them venom-proof if there was no Dilophosauruses on Isla Nublar or anything else which was venomous? That's because they clearly are. The Dilophosaurus were running wild on Isla Nublar around the restricted section. They couldn't gather them all up. This was basically confirmed in the book The Evolution of Clay. That immediately tells us that they were never on display for that reason, and they were experimenting with venomous creatures. Further to this, we also know that the Scorpius Rex was venomous, showing again more evidence that they were experimenting with venomous creatures. And I know you're probably going down the lines of, oh, is it a venomous snake because he did a video on the Titanoboa in Jurassic World. Now, we know Titanoboa wasn't venomous, it was a constrictor, so it isn't a snake in today's video. But the evidence of it being a venomous creature definitely starts stacking up. And there are only four dinosaurs we know of which potentially would have been venomous, the Dilophosaurus being one of them, with the Compi being the second and the Pro Compi being the third. So what is the fourth? then? Well, I believe the fourth did reside in Jurassic World. And believe you me, it is definitely a thing of nightmares. Now, immediately you're thinking it's got to be something huge, something which would be far scarier than the Indominus Rex or the Scorpius Rex. Well, not really. It doesn't have to be huge. You see, this is a parasitic dinosaur we're talking about, which we know was in Jurassic World. You see, the official DPW Twitter account, or X as it's called now, confirmed a sighting of this dinosaur in the woods. And it actually resembles the one which gave me nightmares. The one from Jurassic Park, the game, which we know wasn't canon, but now because of this new evidence, the design will be. And not only that, this dinosaur was cut from Jurassic World Chaos Theory as an assassin dinosaur and would have been used as the same purpose as the Atrocity Raptor pack. I think you've guessed it, the Troodon. And I don't mean the Jurassic World Genie Troodon, which I'll talk about in a second. I mean the Jurassic Park Troodon. And I know you're probably asking, how was this in Jurassic World? Well, I'll explain that in a second. And I know if you don't know anything about this creature, you're probably asking the question, well, what makes them so terrifying? Huh? Well, believe you me, I'll get onto that, and it is terrifying. You see, the Jurassic World Troodon was potentially part of the Ibris Project, because Dr. Kate Walker, a Jurassic World scientist, was working better to understand the emotions and feelings of dinosaurs, very much like Owen Grady was with his raptors, but she worked with a Troodon named Genie. This Troodon was different to the Troodon I'm talking about, though, because this Troodon Genie was very much like Owen's blue, and her goal was to better understand and predict the behaviour. However, the research stopped when the Indominus Rex escaped. A few months after the fall of Jurassic World, it was presumed that she was dead, although Dr. Kate discovered she's alive, and then she wants to relocate the animal, although she uncovers a conspiracy that InGen hasn't given up on weaponizing dinosaurs. Ha! Who would have thought, huh? And thus, that leads into the storyline of Jurassic World The Live Tour. 
And that's how he explains how this Troodon exists, but it doesn't explain how our Troodons we've seen in Jurassic Park the game have gone into Jurassic World and were then sighted on the mainland in Jurassic World Dominion. The person said that the animal bit merchants in the village and it caused them to run off, exactly like Jurassic Park the game. Not only did they resemble the exact ones, the behavior is exactly the same. The sighting also confirms that they were probably cloned on Isla Nublar and two individuals were brought to the mainland. And where have we seen this before? That's right, the Dilophosaurus. They weren't able to round up all the Dilophosaurus. That's how they were still running wild in Jurassic World. Why they made the gyrospheres venom proof. Because the Troodon was exactly the same. They was not able to round all of them up. I mean, they're smaller than the Dilophosaurus, more elusive, nocturnal. They were also running around Jurassic World. Because you see, just one bite is enough to paralyze anybody. And then you're kept alive in stasis for some far worse fate. You see, it's highly likely that they were created in the original Jurassic Park, but were called to be terminated, very much like the Scorpius Rex, and that's why they were scratched off InGen's list for being extremely smart and venomous. Now, I'm not going to dispute Jurassic Park the game's canonicity, if that's a word in this video. I mean, we already have proof that they're on the Dino Tracker website, showing that that design is now canon to the movie franchise. But how they ended up on the mainland, and if they were in Jurassic World, is obviously open to debate. We know in the game that they were a hidden dinosaur and kept in a secret quarantine pen before being released into the wild, which fits with our Isla Nublar theory in Jurassic World, like the Dilophosaurus. The only issue here is we have the 1994 cleanup, where basically they go to the island and they were exterminated, but if that was the case, wouldn't they have exterminated all of the dinosaurs, meaning there would have been none there for them to salvage in the early 2000s for Jurassic World? That's right, they didn't. It's impossible that they cleaned up every single dinosaur. They didn't. They didn't do that with the Dilophosaurus. Dilophosaurus, the Compignathus, or the Troodon. The evidence is there, but this is the scary part, and this is the reason why you wouldn't want them running around Jurassic World, because just one bite, like I said, paralyzes you, and then comes the fate, which I believe is probably worse than death. But we're only just getting started on the real horror of this clone species. The nightmare reputation can be owed to its venomous bite, which would cause hallucinations, and in some cases, the victim would become extremely violent and attack nearby individuals. Unless the infection was treated by an extremely powerful tranquilizer, the victim will go into a series of convulsions, seizures, and the final stage of paralysis and brain death. But this is only the start of the Troodon's hunting tactic. Using this venom as their primary weapon, they would hunt by biting their victim and then fleeing, but stalking their victim as it suffered from the effects of the venom. That is when the Troodon would lay its eggs. Now, I did say the Troodon were nightmare horrors, and this is the next part, so if you're squeamish, I would recommend skipping this part. When a Troodon was about to lay eggs, she would kill one of her prey as usual, but instead of eating her kill, she would instead partially bury it in a secluded area. While the victim was still paralyzed, she would rip open her victim and lay eggs in them, so in a human, it would be the abdomen. It is presumed that the victim's body is used to provide both body heat and food for the hatchlings, which would proceed to eat the corpse from the inside out. This method of rearing young is like that of a spider wasp species, with the clone Troodon being the only non-insect that uses this method. But we're only really just getting started with the Troodon. Upon Troodon's creation, Dr. John Hammond, founder of InGen, did not add Troodon to InGen's list because it did not fit his vision of Jurassic Park. Ultimately, Hammond ordered these clones to be destroyed along with the records of their creation. But the doctor who created them instead lied to John Hammond and secretly kept the Troodons on the island in the quarantine pens to continue studying them. Now, this is where it starts to get really interesting. Now, when Dennis Nedry disabled Jurassic Park's security systems in order to steal dinosaur embryos for Lewis Dodgson, he disabled the quarantine pens containing the Troodon pack as well, allowing them to roam freely, a massive mistake. Now, before we go any further, it is worth pointing out that this law comes directly from Jurassic Park the game, although Trodons are technically canon because they're part of Jurassic World the live tour, and Jurassic Park the game is considered soft canon. They're also part of Jurassic World evolution. The first action of the free Trodons was handing at Nima Kraz, a woman who Nedry was supposed to meet at the East Dock to give him the embryos. If it wasn't for Dr. Harding, she would have died a few hours later. The next day, they attacked
attack several people, including Daniel Cafaro, who was the pilot of a helicopter. The Trodons dragged his body to a room inside the geothermal power plant where a female laid eggs inside his chest. Due to the nature of the Trodons like in the dark, the big bulbous eyes actually glow in the dark, so it's an easy way to see them. This is how Nima was able to see the Trodons in the darkness. And does this not look exactly like the picture we see on the Dino Tracker website? It does. And the fact that they were meant to be cast in Jurassic World Chaos Theory tells me they are definitely out there. And I, for one, couldn't think of a worse fate than being paralyzed, eaten alive, and then having eggs laid inside of you, waiting for them to hatch. Ugh, just gives me the heebie-jeebies thinking about it. That, for me, is why they're the most terrifying dinosaur to be in Jurassic World's restricted section. And hopefully they were shut behind some massive door. And with that being said, I'm shutting the door on this theory. But what do you think? Is there a dinosaur more terrifying than the Trodon? I'd be hard pushed to find one. And do you agree with my theory work? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, I highly recommend checking out my other restricted section videos because they're very much like this, theory crafted with great content, if I do say so myself. Alan Grant approved. With that being said, a huge thanks to the researchers on screen now and the research executive leading the team, DVM Wannabe1018. Thanks very much, guys. And if you saw a Trodon in the park, could you dig any worse? You bet Jurassic can. Catch you later.